Hello and welcome to another video. In this video, I'm going to be talking about how I passed the AZ900 exam and sharing all the resources that I used to pass the exam. So yeah, if you're thinking about taking the exam, then this video is definitely for you. I'll be sharing all the resources in a Substack article linked in my description below. So if you don't want to listen to my voice and just want to get the quick written version, then just click on the link in the description. So yeah, let's get into it. Firstly, I'll say that I recently did an exam by ISC squared called the CCSP, which to be honest, gave me a lot of cloud knowledge and made this exam very easy for me because that exam was harder and dived into a lot more detail. But the problem was it was kind of technology agnostic. It didn't really include anything specific about Azure, AWS, GCP. It's kind of general underlying cloud technology and how it works and security and operational practices and so much more. And out of that kind of study path I did for that, there's probably a few documents that helped me so much in the AZ900 exam. One of them is called Security Guidance for Critical Areas of Cloud Computing. And that's from CSA, the Cloud Security Alliance. And the other is called the Enterprise Architecture Reference Diagram, again by the CSA. And those are kind of two resources that aren't commonly shared for the AZ900 or Azure certifications in general. Normally people just point you towards a Microsoft documentation which is great and you need to read the Microsoft documentation, but I do think these are great supplementary resources and are quick reads that will teach you a lot because the AZ900 exam is split up into three sections. First, been describing cloud concepts, describing Azure architecture and services, and describing Azure management and governance. So for the first section describing cloud concepts, these are supplementary resources that you should be using. In terms of the Microsoft documentation, I always say it's good to kind of go further than what's expected. So I think reading and having an understanding of the Azure well-architected framework, which is so many web pages, to be honest, on Azure architecture and best practice, but it will give you a really good insight into how things work and should work. And of course, you have the Microsoft recommended documentation on these specific areas and split up and they're all free and available online and by the way everything I'm mentioning in this video is free so far so after you've kind of reviewed and read a lot of these documentation you probably should get a good video style course to watch I personally use the one on plural site but I know that's a paid service or a free alternative that I also used and watched after doing the plural site one which to be honest was just pretty much the same in terms of quality so Microsoft Azure fundamentals course it's on free code camps channel it's about eight hours long and to be fair, that's pretty much all you need as long as you've got the supplementary resources. I wouldn't pay for a plural site license because it's pretty much exactly the same thing, to be honest. In terms of practice questions, I didn't really do a lot because I'd just done a kind of harder cloud exam, so I didn't feel the need to do it, to do as many questions as you might do if this was like your first ever certification. So, you know, gauge where you are in your kind of career and knowledge and do more questions if it's like your first certification you're going for. Microsoft have 50 free questions that they use and it's like normally to kind of test your readiness for the exam but I just did them quite early on after completing my first course WizLabs also has question banks and videos and a bunch of other things but I just did their free 30 questions and didn't pay for anything else and other than that to be honest I was just googling for free AZ900 type of questions looking at reddit for Microsoft certifications and AZ900 a lot of people would post a lot of free question banks in there which was great there was also an app I downloaded and again you know I downloaded I think two or three apps and I just used a free questions on there normally you'd get you know 10 to 50 free questions so in total i probably only did about two to three hundred questions which is different to the normal two to three thousand that i would do for most exams but this is a fundamentals exam it is entry level it's supposed to be easy you know there's no prerequisites don't overcomplicate it it's not a hard exam there's only like 30 or 40 questions in the actual exam itself. They're pretty straightforward if you have a basic understanding of cloud computing and Microsoft Azure, especially if you've worked in Azure. Now, it is good to get practical experience. So if you can mess around, try and create some virtual machines and, and set up stuff, you know, be labbing and always trying to do stuff practically to try and cement the ideas. And you do get some free access or free tiers that you can do. So why not use that? 
that's not so much required to pass the exam, but it's definitely required to make you a better professional. So you might as well do it just to cement the ideas and also learn the practical skills to go alongside it. And lastly, in terms of the actual testing experience, and I'm not going to be making the same mistake again next time, is I took the exam from home, from this office actually. And you have to download this like Pearson View application and it kind of makes sure there's no other windows open on your machine and shuts down every application and everything. And then you have this like exam invigilator looking at you the whole time on a camera watching what you're doing. And it's like, it's a very weird experience. And primarily because, you know, I made sure my internet was running smoothly had no connectivity issues, wired connection, as they recommend. You have to clear your office, get rid of all your screens and empty everything, all papers, pens and tissues and everything just has to go and you have to have like a clear desk, clear environment. So, so you can't be cheating basically, which is what you'd expect. But because mine disconnected like three or four times on their end, not even on my end, I would have an have to go through the whole process again and when you're kind of setting up and registering for your exam to be released to you you have to like take a picture of like the right of your desk the left the front the back your room then someone jumps on a call you walk around with your laptop and you're showing them the camera of the room and every single time i had three different people every single time one of them would point something out the other one didn't i don't know if they're working off the same common set of rules i mean they probably should be but one person was like oh yeah, that's fine, go ahead, you know, you've cleared everything else. Then the next person would be like, nope, you're not allowed your headphones, nope, Bluetooth devices are banned. And I'm like, what the hell? Like, surely someone else would have mentioned that. Then another guy was like, nope, you need to get rid of your bin. You're not allowed to have a bin near you. So I don't know in a bin if you wanted to cheat. But the first person didn't have a problem with a bin. And then the last person was like, you can't even have a handkerchief or a tissue. And it wasn't even a tissue, it was like a microfiber cloth I got on my desk for cleaning screens. I picked it up and showed them. It was clear, no notes, nothing dodgy, but yeah, they all had very weird kind of expectations. That aside, two questions before I finished the exam, the whole thing cut out. And I checked my internet quickly, immediately, just to make sure, you know, I hadn't disconnected. Everything was fine on my end, but there was an issue with the Pearson View application. And for whatever reason, it's crashed. So then I had to go, literally two questions before the end, I had to go through the whole thing all over again. And it was just stressful and annoying because, you know, you just want to focus on the exam. You don't want to be thinking about all the conditions and at that time that was when the guy was on about my tissue and my bin and random other stuff just for two questions but you get the point i think if you can just go to the exam testing center the application and software they use doesn't seem that well it crashed three times for me so i wouldn't recommend it and it's not so bad with an easier exam like this because it is a fundamental one but i imagine if you're doing like the az 104 or 500 or any other kind of difficult azure exam you just want to focus on the exam because a lot of brain juice is needed and you don't want to waste your brain juice thinking about if your tissue is too far away or what the two meter distance is to reach something it's just not what you want to do. So overall, really cool exam, really quick and easy. I hope the resources help. Like I said, they're all going to be in the description. I think um, this is kind of my first exam on my road to becoming better at Azure. So hopefully you will be seeing something more from me on the AZ-104 because that is what I'm preparing for next and that's significantly harder. And then after that, I might go for the 500 or the SC-200 or one of the other numbers and letters that is good and is what you should do but if you've got any recommendations or kind of a path you think i should follow for microsoft azure then please drop it in the comments i'd be interested in hearing what you think and also what are you doing you know tell me what exams you're taking and what you're planning to do after this because there's so many microsoft certifications it's kind of hard to understand where to go to next and yeah be interested to hear how you're approaching it so good luck if you're taking the exam and alhamdulillah thank god for giving me the brain power to sit another exam inshallah i pass the next ones that i've got planned out too and if you've enjoyed this video please like comment share and subscribe and i'll see you in the next one